Welcome CSE 230W1 to another quick exercise. This one will introduce us to Flexbox and it's a way of laying out parts of web pages where we use a container except we don't have to use floats. It's called Flexbox and we're just going to do a little intro here and we're going to use it a little bit more in our next exercise but for EX6 we're just going to adapt our EX5 exercise with Flexbox. So it's going to look like this in the end, which won't look any different, except we're going to make these two columns a little bit wider than the other two columns. And when we go to our breakpoint, it's going to become one column and stacked. And notice it's gray, white, gray, white. That was part of the challenge or the question in the last discussion. And I'll go over that as well. But what I'm going to do first is delete this and start from scratch. Now what you're going to do from EX5 is you're going to copy EX5. Now there's not an easy way, at least that I know yet, to actually duplicate the EX5 folder or else we just do that. <laughs> but I can't find a way to duplicate the folder. So what we're going to have to do here is just go on your index, your main index. Make sure you're not on this folder because it'll put a folder inside it. But just go here, add a new folder and call it EX6. And then inside here, we'll add a file and we'll call it index.html. That'll be our home page, like usual. And we'll make another one. So go on here and add a file and we'll call it styles.css, just like we've been doing. And they'll be blank. And what we'll do is we'll just copy the code from ex5 and then we're going to change it. So I'll open up ex5 index, I'll highlight it all. And you could do Control A on Windows, Command A on Mac, and then Control C to copy it, or Command C if you're on a Mac. And go to this index page and just paste it all. And do the same thing with the styles. Go to EX5, highlight, Command A, Control A, highlight all, and then copy it, Command C, Control C, whatever you need to do and then go here and then paste it which is control V on Windows or command V on Mac and then we'll basically have a duplicate of the EX5 folder called EX6 now what we're gonna do in index we're just gonna change our title and call it flex intro then also in our H1 we'll call that flex intro as well you could type it again or you could copy it and that's all you should have to do with that is just change the title and the headline while I'm in my styles, I just want to point out that this is the kind of the answer to the discussion question of changing the colors of alternating rows in the media query. And all I did was just target box one and box three. And by putting a comma in between, that means we can select each. Remember, if there's no comma, it would mean box three inside of box one. But with a comma, it means multiple classes. So these two multiple classes and these two multiple classes, these got a light gray, these got a white. And there's other ways to do it. We could have done a odd child of our main container and the even child, but this was easy enough to do that. So that was the answer to making it gray, white, gray, white, and stacking it. So what we're going to do now to use something called flex and a couple things about flex. One thing I'd like you to do is check out this video and I'll have a link to it. It's Flexbox in 20 minutes. And if you played at a higher speed, you could do it faster. But it's by Brad Traversy and I like his stuff. He's very laid back, but he really knows his stuff. So uh, he has tons of videos and he has, I think, a million subscribers. So obviously 1.67 subscribers, he knows his stuff. And it's, it's a really nice video. and. We're not going to do everything that he's doing in the video, but we'll just touch on it in this. So if you kind of watch his stuff, uh, that'll give you a nice little introduction. He has a lot of good videos, a lot of great stuff for CSS, for HTML, for all kinds of stuff. So that's Traversy Media and the Flexbox in 20 minutes. Watch over that first just to see some of the things we're going to do in our next exercise and a little bit in this exercise. And then also when you want to know stuff about Flexbox as well, check out W3Schools, Flexbox. They have a section on Flexbox in the CSS tutorial. So just go to CSS Flexbox. They talk about the container, the items inside the container, and also responsive, which is what we're going to do. And basically, it's kind of what we've been doing. It's having a container and then having items inside that kind of sit in that container that can be in 
columns or you could stack them in rows, whatever you want to do. And it just gives an easier way of doing that instead of doing floats and instead of doing tables. So that's what we're going to focus on here. So that's a little introduction. Flexbox here and you can check out Flexbox here and there's probably other places that I'll find for you. But at least for an intro, that's what we'll do. So now that we're here, I'm going to close this because I'm going to open it up again because I have my new index now. And what I'll do is before I completely collapse this is I'll open this up and notice it's showing my main home page and that's another thing you might want to do is go to your main home page for your CSC 230 your root index I should say that's kind of your root of what we're working on here so I'm going to click on the root and it's easy to make a link just copy the previous one paste it and change it to ex6 as long as you're naming your folders like that you should be fine and change this as well so it shows up as ex6 so that's all you have to do there and I'll go back to here to our index page I'll go back to this tab and I'll refresh it and I'll click on ex6 and it'll look just like ex5 because I didn't change anything yet and in the end it will but I'm gonna go back here and I don't think there's anything else I have to do with the index page all we're gonna do with flexbox is change the CSS now what we're going to change is let's go to the top here and we can keep this container. Sometimes you'll see it called flex container, but that doesn't matter. Uh, the class names are the class names, so whatever you call them, but we don't need overflow auto anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that and we're not going to use floats. So I'm going to get rid of that and we're not going to put a width in here. So I'm going to get rid of that and we don't need box sizing. By the way, I didn't mention this earlier, but sometimes you'll see box sizing in with the global reset so that it's always there. So you don't have to specify certain classes to have box sizing. You could say any class that needs it will have it, but I'm gonna take this out for now and we don't need that. And we're not gonna use any float here. So we don't need float none in here. So I'll get rid of that. And I'll run it and just see what it looks like, I guess, for now, until we get back into what we're doing. So I'll refresh it. And now it's just stacked. So we don't have anything side by side right now. And we're going to use Flex to do that. And what we're going to do, and if you go to Flexbox and look at the container, all that you have to do is basically indicate that you're using this Flex type layout. So you're going to use the property display and use flex. And that's all you have to do. And that's going to be for the container that's holding your elements that are going to be either in a row and columns, whatever you need to do. And there's all kinds of properties for the items in the flex container. And there's properties for the flex container itself on how they align and how they flow, all kinds of things like that. But right now we're just going to focus on just doing display flex. So we do have a container, so we're going to go back here and we did call a container. So we're going to put display flex and I'll do that first. And if you start typing it, you'll see flex come up here and I'll put a semicolon. I'll hit enter and I think I lost my padding here, but I'll put that back. I think I had padding there of 2M. So that's all we need there. And we don't always have to do this because it's default, but what I'm going to put here is flex direction and we're just going to put row right now right now it says column but we're going to put them across so we're going to use row so we'll put something called flex direction and row and everything in there will be evenly spaced even before we do anything that's all we have to do display flex flex direction row so let's see what happens let's go here Let's refresh it and it already does that. It breaks it up evenly across. You don't have to put percents, anything like that. It just knows to put them evenly. And there's ways we're gonna be able to put space in between them. You can change how much space they take up. If we put something like two, two, one, one, it'll put double the space, double the space, single space, single space. So it's almost like a percentage of the space that you're using. So for example, if I went down into box one and I put something called flex and it's actually using a flex grow property, but we'll just put flex right now because that's like a shortcut. We'll just put flex and I'll put two and I'll put a semicolon. And I'm not sure if I have to make the other ones one. I'll see how that works right now. And I'll hit run 
and I'll see what happens here. And it doesn't look right. I think I have to put them for all of them. So let me do this. Let me put flex two and then put flex one. And then I'll just put flex one. And for the fourth one, I'll put flex one. So it'll be two, one, one, one. Flex two, flex one, flex one, flex one. And I'll run it. And that's the way it should look. There's, it's taking up double the space, and this is taking up the rest of the space. And the original sample, I think I put two of them that have two. So you can go and put box one and box two. You could put them at two. And it'll be two, two, one, one. And you hit run if you want. And then I'll just do that. So these are double the space of those two. But it's still doing the same thing. So that's the way flex works. So it's a little easier than working with floats and worrying about percentages and widths and all that. And again, it's not it's not wrapping, although you can set it to wrap. And when it gets to our breakpoint, because we still have the breakpoint in there, it's going to jump and be columns. Well, actually, right now it's not. It, it's not jumping to be rows, it's still saying columns. So we want to change that. And the way we do that, we don't do like flex none. What we actually do is we're going to go in here to highlight container because that's the one we're going to change from being row to being column. So I'm going to copy that and put it in my media query. And I don't know, I'm going to delete this. I don't even know if I need that anymore by putting the, the width 100% of box. I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to paste container and I'll move this up. I'll tab it in. I'll tab these things in so they look nice. I'll tab this in so it lines up and I don't need padding or background color because it's not going to change. Same thing, if nothing changes, you don't have to put it in there. And display flex isn't going to change, so I don't need that there either but I'm going to make this be column. Make sure you spell it right. And that's going to be column. And I'll run it, and I'll see what happens. And it looks the same because nothing changed. I only changed the media query. But now when I drag it over, it should stack in rows if it works right. And it does. That's it. That's EX6. That's all you have to do for EX6. So just to review, uh, make sure you watch the video of the Flexbox in 20 minutes. Make sure you check out W3Schools Flexbox and look at some of that because we're going to do that in our next exercise. But all that you have to do here is make sure that you go to the container declaration and put in display flex and flex direction row. And even if you don't do that, it's going to default to row. But we're going to put that in because then we're going to change it down here. Oh, and we also did this. We did flex two, flex two, flex one, flex one for each individual box so that they're kind of lined up like that. They take up double the space, double the space, single space, single space. And down in our media query, we didn't have to do anything for box. I just indicated that the container would have a flex direction of column. And that's all I had to change there. And I still have these colors from that discussion question where we're making the odd ones gray and the even ones white. So that's all you have to do. And that'll be a little intro to Flexbox. And we're going to do some more. But I just wanted to get you started on that for EX6. So to give you something to do. And I'll give you a little more reading on that as well. But at least you could start with the video and start looking at some W3Schools Flexbox. And that's not the only way we can do this. There's also something called CSS Grid that we're going to work with. But as far as items that go across the page in terms of containers of what we're doing and just rows and columns, more simple kind of layouts, Flexbox works really well for that. So that's what we're doing for that. So that's EX6. You just have to indicate that it's complete in EX6 for Unit 7. And then we'll move on to EX7, which will be a bigger layout that we're going to work with. And we'll try to use Flexbox for that as well.